Punk Revolution now. Today we're going to be reviewing The Dead Kennedys. Fresh fruit for rotting vegetables. One of the greatest punk albums of all time. One of the most popular, most critically acclaimed punk albums of all time. It's The Dead Kennedys. This is, I mean, The Dead Kennedys kick ass. It is true that The Dead Kennedys are, well... They're an incredibly popular punk band. They are very, very well known basically by anyone who knows anything about punk and frankly people who don't even know punk I'm sure have heard the name. But this is not one of those situations where they're the accessible entry level punk band but then you dig a little deeper into the genre of punk and you find better stuff and the Dead Kennedys is just to dip your toes in and help you get into the genre. No. The Dead Kennedys are not only are they, uh, you know, a popular punk band and a central punk band, but they also are like incredibly talented and one of the very best. And they deserve that reputation and they're very influential for a good reason. They kick ass. They are, they're, they're just unmatched at what they're doing just on so many different levels. Personally, when I first listened to the Dead Kennedys back in high school, 16 years old, I didn't really click with it too much. I was more into avant-garde progressive ding dong music and I felt like the Dead Kennedys were a little too straightforward sloppy punk for my taste. But of course, now that I'm older, and have better taste and, uh, you know, just have have a bigger, a better appreciation. And I mean, punk is my favorite genre now. I can see with my own two eyes that this album is absolutely incredible. So if you don't like this album, keep watching and hopefully I'm going to point you into some direction that's going to help you appreciate this album more. And if you already do love this album, hopefully I can point some cool stuff out about it that you haven't thought about too much. That's going to help you appreciate it even more because it is truly a brilliant piece of art. Let's get started by taking a look at the album cover. Immediately, we're diving into some pretty badass territory with this album cover. It's a pretty punk cover. I mean, these this is, um, for those of you who can't tell, these are police cars that are burning on fire, and there's really nothing more punk than burning police cars, and this was actually during the 1979 White Knight Riots, which were riots in response to Dan White, who was a San Francisco, San Francisco, San Francisco cop that killed two San Francisco politicians, one of them notably Harvey Milk, uh, one of the, I think he was like the first openly gay, maybe first, or one of the first openly gay politicians in the United States, obviously Dan White, this freaking asshole cop. Killing these two politicians is a an act of right-wing terrorism, killing two of like some of the only decent politicians in the entire United States. And then in response to that, well, Dan White only got seven years in prison for killing two people, that's already atrocious, but for killing two politicians um, with a lot of support because they're LGBTQ friendly. It's disgusting. Obviously the correct response to that is to burn some police cars and make sure to get a picture of it because it's going to make a freaking badass punk album cover. And as you can already tell, this is a very political, very screw the system album cover. And we're going to get into some very political territory with this album lyrically, which I think is going to be just immediately standing out to everyone. Just immediately that opening track. It's kind of funny that bass line is in the, the whole song. The melodies is just so catchy. It sounds like we're running on the beach. All, we're all running. We're going to have some fun. And then you get to the chorus. Kill, 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 kill the poor. Kill, kill. Kill, kill, kill the poor. Kill, kill, kill. It's like so fun. It's so fun. And the lyrics are obviously a satire of the right wing shift in American politics. This is in 1980. This came out in 1980. This is like like a prophecy how ahead of its time. Because America in 1980 was in the midst of a huge right wing shift. We got Ronald Reagan. Two terms of Ronald Reagan. For those of you who are not a f a f familiar, a big part of the Ronald Reagan philosophy was we need to take care of these goddamn motherfuckers who are leeching off of us off our welfare system. That's what he basically said in more or less words. And that was the philosophy where the entire right wing in America was going towards. And we got two terms of that. And then a third with George H.W. Bush. And then finally we get a democratic president who is Bill Clinton, who is also more or less on board with the, with the, you know, anti-welfare, tough on crime, sort of right wing kind of cultural stuff. The dead Kennedy's see exactly that's happening and in 1980 at the very beginning of this entire right wing shift they released this incredible manifesto screw the right wing screw the freaking right wing for being evil genocidal assholes who want to just kill poor people so they don't have to pay welfare taxes screw the liberals for ro going along with it again another prophecy it's like he predicted the bill Cl clinton presidency he, he says that in the song He's, you know the if we convince the liberals it's okay let's kill poor people but i just want you to understand even though Jello Biafra, the, the singer and 
and songwriter here is very clearly a, a leftist. This is not about like, let's just have like a, a bunch of leftist ideals thrown into an album, even though there is a lot of that screw landlords and everything. I mean, Jello Biafra is clearly just an incredible in, intel, intellectual dude who just hates everybody because he's going after, just everyone is getting roasted here. The far right, the, the center right, the center left, and even leftists too. He's attacking other leftists. He's going after, in the song Holiday in Cambodia, he's making fun of college kids, hippies, who even though, you know, both Jello Biafra and these college kid hippies can agree the system is broken, these college kid hippies idealize the, the you know, countries like Cambodia, the communist countries, as if somehow them being an American college kid makes them more oppressed than people in Cambodia who are literally being murdered, both rightists and leftists who are killing each other. It's, you know, a horrible situation. He's making fun of leftists, too, for being delusional about the, the situation happening in those countries, too. He's going after everybody. No one is safe. Landlords, he's even has a song about wanting to kill kids. He has a song about wanting to kill himself. He's, he's I mean, this is, it's just packed with... Fun melodies, and you listen to the lyrics. What is he saying? He is saying, "I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I hate myself. I hate everybody." Here's a picture. Here's a dope picture of cop cars on fire. Cause that's how I feel. That's what. That's the only thing that's gonna make me feel any better right now in this goddamn society that's losing its mind about to freaking elect Ronald Reagan twice and then. George H. W. Bush and going to war, killing lots of people. It's like, dude's a genius. Dude's a genius, and he has all this intellectual stuff going on with a lot of hatred and bitterness. And then the music itself is like super noisy, and I think a lot of people are not gonna really enjoy this album. You know, I think a lot of people who don't like distortion and noisiness aren't gonna like it. But I think also a lot of modern teenagers these days who like browsing rate your music and want experimental music are gonna actually dislike it for the opposite reason for not being experimental enough that's kind of how i felt about it in high school you know because these ultimately are just really really good verse course verse course guitar bass drums singing rock songs they're just really well written rock songs even though it gets noisy and political and intellectual the number one thing that makes it so amazing is the fact that it's like doing all this awesome stuff musically, which I'm going to get into, while just really just being pretty straightforward, kind of, co you know, cohesive, like, straightforward, just really good rock music. And just an FYI, in 1980, there really wasn't very much hardcore punk yet. Yes, there was Black Flag that had released some singles, there was The Germs, this is all, by the way, this is all happening in California, The Dead Kennedys also being a band from San Francisco, which is where Harvey Milk was, uh, was from as well, so that picture is obviously personal to him. In 1980, there really wasn't that much hardcore punk yet. Like, this album was a kind of, again, innovative, not only with, like, the cool political lyrics and just, just being a freaking badass album, but musically as well, like, a, like ahead of the curve. The obvious influences are, like, the Ramones, which is, like, super melodic, you know, really fun punk that we can all sing along to with, like, you know, just really, really distorted guitars. Maybe, like, the Sex Pistols, because the Sex Pistols are kind of like the Ramones, but just take the, the, the distortion and edginess and abrasiveness a little bit further. I'd say the Dead Kennedys definitely kind of lean into that Sex Pistols abrasiveness, and then, of course, the Sex Pistols have this sort of like fuck everybody attitude, but I'm gonna keep it real with you folks. The Sex Pistols, their fuck you attitude was so kind of lame. Like what, they, what, what the heck is the Sex Pistols, what, what are the Sex Pistols rebelling against? Fuck the queen. Like what a lame message. I mean, the Sex Pistols has some great songs and, but you know, they were really just edgy for the sake of being edgy. Like that's kind of the whole Sex Pistols thing. The Dead Kennedys, they're definitely edgy. Like I said, they wanna, they're, they have a song about killing landlords, song about killing kids, songs about killing themselves, songs about how they hate the, the left, they have songs about how they hate the right, they hate everybody. Very intellectual lyrics with lots of very obscure political references. California Uber Alice, which is attacking Governor Jerry Brown in the in 1979 and comparing him to Nazis because he's clearly just thirsty for gaining more power. I mean, that's like a really obscure kind of weird political critique, but it's pretty badass and the song is really catchy. The Dead Kennedys are way more intellectual than the Sex Pistols. Their music is way more in interesting musically. I mean, listen to these melodies. They're so catchy, but a lot of the like melodies and bass lines and guitar riffs that kind of make their way into this album are like real like dissonant, angular, like, you know, like doo 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 
Like it sounds like it's something out of a freaking horror film, but then like a lot of the melodies and riffs are like incredibly catchy. And a lot of it also has like some surf rock in it, like some very surf rock kind of like, you know, reverby guitar solos that rip. And of course they're California. Every California punk band, even though they might be singing about how miserable they are, it seems like California punk tends to just have a lot more, uh, a lot more fun than East Coast punk, which is kind of why I prefer East Coast punk. But regardless, how is it simultaneously depressing politically, but also hilarious, but also really dissonant and distorted, but also really catchy, but also has like some spooky riffs, but then also has some surf rock riffs, and then kind of has this sort of like, you know, just take the lyrics out completely. You listen to the guitars and drums and stuff, it kind of has like this sort of like military feel. It's like the music itself is like a satire of fascism, even just taking the lyrics out. How do you even do that? I don't know. They're doing all these things that are incredibly intellectual with an, uh, the message ultimately being like, fuck you, that's it. Just fuck you, you're all fucking idiots. That's all there is to it. It's a great message. The music is super catchy. It's innovative. It's, it's only a 33 minute album and it does all this. And it's not like they're trying super hard. Like, they, like I said, they're just playing really tight rock songs. Even though a lot of people who, like I said, are avant-garde teenagers who like rate your music might be turned off by just the fact that they're playing power chords and it's, you know, messy and sloppy rather than like, you know, progressive King Crimson, you know, all that stuff, which I like too. The bottom line is, is this, this, they are, pl they are playing their ass off. They are all phenomenal musicians, even though it sounds simple and even though it's all, uh, messy. They're, they're also incredibly talented. And Jello Biafra, of course, I obviously really like him with the lyrics, but also his voice is so like he's got a weird voice. I can't even, can't even mock it because it's so weird. And then of course he's, <sighs> did you know he actually ran in 20, uh, in the year 20,000, in the year 2000, he ran for the presidential nomination in the Green Party? What? And then he supports Bernie Sanders and then he supports Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and I mean, he's, I mean, he's going at it, but you know, even though he's clearly a leftist, I just want to be clear. This album is saying fuck you to everybody. I don't think you have to be a leftist to appreciate this album. I think you just got to be a bitter, cynical person who is frustrated with everyone being a fucking idiot, which is a great message. It's very punk. Um, but of course he's, um, sticks to his guns, his leftist guns throughout the record as well. And there's a lot more to it than just saying screw you, which is kind of what the Sex Pistols had. There's actually a lot of intellect going on here. Wow. What a freaking phenomenal album in so many ways. It really is a freaking phenomenal album. For those of you who are wondering what my political views are, because I know some people think I'm kind of ambiguous with my politics, it's just this record. Just just listen to this record, and if you're not sure how I feel about a specific topic, just see what this album has to say, and that's how I feel about it, if I'm being honest. But, you know, politics aside, they could be just singing about hot babes on the beach, and this would still be an amazing album musically. It's so freaking catchy, so fun. Obviously, the satirical misery in it is, um... It's like the best part, but I mean, that's how good, I mean, I, I'm a guitarist. I love good guitar playing. I love good, I love good musicians. This album is, um, it's doing that. It's like, how is this album so abrasive and dark, but so makes me want to get up and shake my ass. So I'm giving it a 10. Obviously it's a 10, it's a classic, it's innovative. It's, I already said all the good stuff about it. It's freaking great. Dead Kennedys. Shout out to Dead Kennedys. That's all I have to say, folks. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it insightful and are able to listen to this album and just enjoy it a little bit more. Or maybe I just said stuff you already know and you're, I, I just ruined the album for you because I'm a pretentious dick. Regardless, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I always appreciate it. My channel is growing fast because of all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Punk Revolution. Nah.